Hi, my name is Jenny Lauren Dowden for Conduit News, and today we have Do Dr. Patrick Wolf joining us in the studio. Today he's going to talk about, are parents capable of choosing the best education for their kids? Well, at my first inclination would be like, well, of course they are, right? They're the experts for their children, but there are many people who say, no, we need to leave it to the professionals and the experts. Talk to us about this. Right. Well, it's it's almost uncontestable that parents are the world's foremost expert on their children and what their children need. I mean, you know that as yeah. a parent. I mean, you are spending so much time with your children through all their stages of development. Mm -hmm. So you know them like the back of your hand. The critics of school choice, though, often contend, yeah, but parents don't really know schools. They don't know schools well enough to uh, choose them properly. And that's where we have some research that clearly contradicts the critics. So. Okay, let's hear about that, because that is one of the main things that people say, especially after seeing what's happened in Arizona. No, you know, we need to leave it to these departments of education and professionals, policymakers. There are too many choices for parents to even think about and consider regarding their schools for kids. So talk to us about the two studies that you have conducted. Yeah, so um, these are rigorous experimental studies. Uh, and this, they, they were situated in Washington, D.C. These are low-income D.C. parents who are choosing schools for the first time. And what we did was we surveyed them about what characteristics they think are important in their child's school, um, and we surveyed them about what, what they know about their child's school. You know, some very objective uh facts about the school, like like enrollment level, class size, mm -hmm. racial demographics, those kinds of things. Yeah. And then there was a lottery to decide which parents got to choose a private school for their child and which parents didn't get a scholarship to choose a private school. And what we found afterwards was that the parents who got the school choice opportunity reported more accurate information mm -hmm. about their child's school. Um, so that makes sense, right? Because yeah. it's like, if now you have to choose it, right. you're going to learn about that service and that right. product and right. that school. So yeah. they they knew their school better than the parents who were denied a school choice opportunity. So what should that tell policymakers as they are considering school choice legislation? Well, I think they, they can be confident in parents. Yeah. You know, um, we, we, we know what we're doing when we choose a child's school. And a follow-up study that I did yeah. showed that the parents who didn't select a school that had the features that they said they wanted. Mm -hmm. So when they made um, an, an imperfect choice, mm -hmm. they were more likely to switch schools. Okay. But with that scholarship, they had that choice. Um, they could make a second choice. And, and you know, basically what we felt that showed is that parents get what they choose for. And if they don't, they choose again. Right. Well, and to me, this just seems like another no brainer. Parents know what is best for their children. And many decades ago, parents were very involved in their education and in their child's school building and what was going on. And it seems like with each passing year, parents are continuing that they're pushed, they're pushed further and further away. So, and now we see this particular year, the rise of the parent wanting to have more control and say in their child's education. So how can, how can lawmakers take such as the, the studies that you've done, these two examples and partner that with, really the cry of what parents are saying. We want to choose what's best for our kids. How do we move that forward? Well, certainly step one is for policymakers to acknowledge that parents are should be in the driver's seat for their child's education um, and that they are good drivers when it comes yeah. to directing their child's education. And they should examine opportunities to give parents, uh, to encourage parents to be more involved. Mm -hmm. Giving them more choices, more options helps get them involved. And what that also does is it pressures the public schools to reach out to parents and to treat education as a shared concern, mm -hmm. as a shared project between the school and the home. And that's when schools work the best. Um, when you have these situations where schools set themselves up 
as adversaries yeah. or substitutes for parents. That doesn't work for kids. Right. Yeah. And we're seeing that play out more and more now. As it, yes, parents are really concerned about the academic quality, but now it's more about their shared values and, and, and the building of character in their child that they really want to have a role in in the education system. And that's something that schools need to support and that parents need to be directly involved in. Well, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Look forward to having you back on again soon. Happy to be here, Jenny.